The summer season always feels like a sprint, constantly jumping to the next project with little to no time to rest between. And then fall arrives and the fall season feels like taking a really deep breath and things become more still and a slower pace takes hold. I intentionally took my first week off of filming in close to three years and it felt nice to welcome the fall season by taking the last few weeks at a slower pace. Needless to say, I'm definitely not caught up, but it definitely feels nice to take the slower moments as the cooler weather arrives. So today I am getting another batch of chicken broth going. I have taken you guys through this process a handful of times, but I'm definitely needing to up my broth game in my basement a little bit, just because I know we don't have too much going into fall and winter and I'm huge on making chicken noodle soup. So I do just use whole chickens. I throw them in whole, top it with water. I add a few other things. I have some scrap celery here and also some garlic scapes. I'm gonna throw some onions in, but really it's really easy. I'm just gonna let it sit. And after a handful of hours, I will actually take these whole chickens out and uh, shred the meat and freeze the meat. So it's really nice that I can get two uses out of these birds. And I really like that. You get a little bit more bang for your buck. I think the last time, I don't think I took you guys long for the last time, but the time before that, I explained how if you were to make your own broth, how it can actually save you a good chunk of money. I made chicken broth in the past on my stove, but this year I bought this roaster. And I will say for anything like broth making, sauce making, or anything like that, I am highly enjoying the $100 investment in my roaster because I don't have to stand at the oven all day making sure everything is stirred. I can check on it a handful of times and honestly it's a lot more hands off so definitely worth the investment. I'm getting way more use out of this than I initially thought. I didn't invest in a big roaster for years because it's like well what else am I going to use that for but it really does come in handy on preserving because it just allows me to not stay around and do other things which I highly enjoy. So if you've never made broth before, one thing I like to do when I'm chopping up stalks of celery is to save the leaves and like all of these other white chunky parts because they work great for broth instead of using a whole stalk of celery. You can just use these scraps that you would otherwise compost or throw away. I like getting dual purpose out of things. Broth is one of those things that you can kind of throw whatever you have scrap wise in and it'll just help boost the flavor. actually forgot how short this cord is though oops and how hot the bottom of this gets so you really want to make sure you have it on an area it's not going to ruin something some of these smaller onions that I harvested from the garden this year as well are a little bit too strong to really use a lot of they just have a really intense flavor which is great for broth making but really not so much if you're sauteing an onion so this is another thing I really like to do with a lot of my smaller onions that I like to just throw them in broth or I like to throw them in things like chili and stuff that will kind of damper that flavor a little bit because yeah they're really strong where did oh I've been throwing them where did my other one go Okay, so it's been four weeks since I made these tinctures and I'm gonna go ahead and get them strained today. I have echinacea here and yarrow here. I have two mason jars with some cheesecloth. I'm gonna strain everything through. And then once the tinctures are strained, they're gonna go in these little amber glass bottles. These do have some droppers on them so that'll be really easy just to drop into tea really fast.
Well, I'm excited. I was able to fill both bottles. The Yarrow is actually a perfect fit. I clearly have a lot of Echinacea left, and I honestly don't know if I really need it all, but we're going to keep it because you just never know. It's not like it's going to go bad or anything, but I'm so excited about this because one thing I've really wanted to do for years now is make tinctures and I've always put it off because I thought it was going to be like a difficult process. But this year was the year I planted Echinacea and Yarrow because I was like, yeah, no, we are going to do it. And it's really cool to see that come full circle. All right, so it's been a few hours and it's time to go ahead and get this chicken out. I'm going to set all of the chicken on this little cookie sheet here. And I'm gonna let it cool for like the next hour or two because it's very, very hot to be working with, which speaking of, I should probably use my eggs over just so they aren't in the way. I will warn you at this point everything will fall off and that's one reason why I have this hot glove on. As you can see everything just falls right off the bone. I also really love doing this because then you have a ton of shredded chicken in your freezer that you can pull out at any time and really use for chicken noodle soups or sandwiches, or whatever your heart desires. So I do have a pot ready with some cheesecloth as well to go ahead and get everything strained. I am gonna let this cool down for probably like an hour or so before I go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to be putting this in my basement fridge overnight. That way all of that fat on the top layer can cool. We can scrape that off, render it down into chicken fat that we can use throughout the entire year. And then the broth will be left over and we'll be able to can it. So this morning I went through all of my garlic harvest and took out all of the bulbs that felt slightly softer because I need to go ahead and start processing these. So hardened garlic will last about three to six months depending on the variety. It's been three months already since I harvested this garlic. I will be planting out my garlic come another four to six weeks. I have a lot of garlic still doing really, really well as far as storage goes. So whoever stands the test of time will get planted in my garden, but I do have quite a bit I can still use fresh. I am gonna go ahead and process some of this down today. I honestly don't know if I will get through all of this because that is a lot of peeling I need to do. One thing I'm going to do is last year I dehydrated and dehydrating garlic takes a very, very long time because there's so much moisture. And I did notice some of the flavor was not as present. So one thing I want to do this year instead of drying all of it, I want to go ahead and mince some of it up and actually freeze it in like little blocks. That way I can just take like a tablespoon of minced garlic out and throw it into a pan really easily. And I've heard that 
raisin garlic holds its flavor really well. So I'm really excited to give that a try. One thing I will note is I did have one variety in particular. I planted eight different varieties of hardneck last year in Russian red. For some reason, I went ahead and threw all in this basket because they tended to all feel soft to me. So I will note that that will probably be a variety I will never grow again just because the storage on that one seemed to be a lot less than some of the others. My Chesnook Red seems to be one of the best so far. a pretty decent harvest this morning i needed to get most of these honey nut squashes harvested i think i have like three or four more on the vine waiting to be picked but these were ready to go so these don't get much bigger than this right here they're really good to trellis i didn't have to support them with anything they are a vine bore resistant squash variety so if you have issues with vine bore in your area i will say these actually are vine bore resistant vine bore got my other two sets of like pumpkins so I was really happy that this was by more resistant I will say for two plants I only got about 12 of these which I don't feel like is that much considering they are a smaller variety but they do taste really good they really have a deep flavor almost I would say it's like a deeper butternut squash flavor so I really liked it I just chopped one up threw it with some potatoes and roasted it it was yummy I also um, harvested a decent amount of jalapenos and serranos this morning I have been starting to ferment peppers once a week uh, I did enough pie for about a quart's worth today I figured since I'm pretty much done drying at this point minus my paprikas I would start doing batches of hot sauce I've never played around with hot sauce but so far, fermenting the peppers is super easy, and from there, I think all I have to do is blend it. One of their eggs either broke and they ate it or something because there's yolk everywhere right now.
some of the yolk fell out. I'm gonna have to clean the whole inside of the coop later. But these nest boxes have a slight slant where all of the eggs roll and they go in here. But sometimes an egg will just kind of lay. And the last time this happened, the girls decided they were gonna eat it. So that's one reason why I got roll down nest boxes is because it helps prevent broody hens and also them doing this. But all the girls love this box for some reason. <laughs> So since these got all gross and not clean anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and wash these, stick them in my fridge, and these will be what I use at first. So now that the broth has had time to sit and there's fat, there's a fat layer on the top, I'm gonna skim off all of that fat, put it in here. I'm gonna render that down probably tomorrow, but it is important to get a lot of this fat off before throwing it in the broth. Okay, so now that I got it all scraped out, I'm gonna go ahead and get this broth heated up and get some jars for them as well. So one thing I like to do, especially when I pressure can, is add a few tablespoons of vinegar to the water, and I will also do it with my jars and cans as well. This will just help any hard water residue, which I definitely have, so keep that in mind. Yesterday, I was able to get seven quarts and nine pints, which I am very happy about. I ended up having one of my quarts not seal when I was checking everything last night before going to bed. So I did stick that in my fridge and I will be sticking that in my freezer here later on today. I just stuck it in the fridge for the time being, but I am gonna get these dated and downstairs. Yesterday, as I was getting all of this canned, we had a cold front come in. We had a high of almost, I think, 100 yesterday, and today I don't even think it's reaching 60, so it feels absolutely beautiful. Today is 
the very first day of fall. It's Thursday the 22nd. So it's really nice that we're having some really nice fall weather for the first day of fall. All right, and you know, I think we're gonna do an easy dinner of beef stew tonight and just crochet all day, cause that sounds lovely.